What's going on everyone? My name is Sherwin and today we are in a Supercharger Studios uh, with my Rivian R1T and is this Cybertruck familiar? Is that guy familiar to you? I got Cobra with me because we are going on a, a little road trip, just a little bit. We're going up north to Las Vegas. We're bringing both trucks. I uh, subscribe to the Tesla Supercharger Network so that I can charge with Cobra and his Cybertruck just to see how it is uh, charging the Rivian in the Supercharger Network. Uh, I brought the A to Z adapter. Not a sponsored video. Come on, A to Z, man. You got, you, got, you got to give your boy like a discount code or something. But I do have discount codes from friends, so I'll share that with you uh, in the video description if you guys are interested, but it's not a sponsored video. So... Uh, how we doing today, man? It's like past five, a little past five, dude. Yeah, it's early trying to beat that rush and that heat, you know? So uh, try to make the most smooth trip that we can. I'm looking forward to just seeing, you know, because I, I don't have autopilot. Oh. Um, and I know you don't use it that much anyway no. in your Tesla, but um, we have that adaptive cruise control, and that's kind of a long trip to take. So yeah. we're going to see how that's going to go. You know, I was thinking um, as we're driving along, I don't think we should be following each other too close because the person behind whoever is going to take advantage of that drafting. Oh, yeah. A little, a little <laughs> cheat, just, little yeah. Cheat. You know what? You may yeah. want to go first then. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You just need to let me know where you want to stop the charge. Uh, okay, okay. So we were checking out our state of charge and um, we I was at 82% state of charge and it was saying like 296 and you were at, what was it? I was at 80% and an estimated 250 miles. So around a similar uh, percentage, his miles are, are a little bit lower. I think mine is at 100%, 330 miles and yours. Mine's is estimated 318. 318, so, so there's, there's some kind of discrepancy, but we're gonna try to match up uh, the miles and not the percentage as close as possible. I think you're charging to 90%. I'm at 90 something right now. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna go to 95. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to 95, and I'm already at 291 miles of range, so I'm being okay. pretty close to you. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that's that's the plan. Uh, we're just gonna have some fun. Um, so he's gonna be uh, taking track of uh, just the the data between like uh, each stop, like what percentage we both get, and I'm just gonna be messing with that adapter and hopefully. Uh, things charge smoothly. I've never charged at a supercharger network with the Rivian, uh, but I do charge with my Tesla there. So I'm pretty familiar, but uh, not not with the Rivian. So this is going to be a good uh, uh, experience here. Well, I have, and I'm mm. going to tell you the biggest thing, I don't know how you'll feel about this. You will probably have to take up two spaces. And if that's the case... I got the Cybertruck with me. I'm like, uh, I know that guy. I know nah, that guy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be with them trash. you like, look at that rivet all taking up our spots. Oh, man. So oh. if you could find a charging, like, this would be perfect right here. Yeah. You know, because you could pull into this spot, and you wouldn't be taking up a charger, another mm. charger. So this would work out perfectly. So if we could figure that out, I mean, I wouldn't big deal it if you could find yeah. it. Yeah, usually on the way to Vegas, the, the charging stations are just, it's plenty. There's, okay. a, there's at least 25, maybe even 30. Um, yeah, and then it's, it's a Wednesday, so it's not going to be many people traveling. Um, but it is a summer, so right. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If not, um, there's Electrify America at Baker. At Barso, there's a Rivian network. Uh, that's it. <laughs> so uh, let's see how it goes and uh, let's get started. All right, so we are in the R1T studios. We are starting our trip. Um, we're trying not to get right behind each other um, because whoever is behind the other person, they actually get a slight advantage uh, because of drafting. Like uh, the vehicle in front is catching all the wind while the vehicle behind is taking advantage of it so the uh, efficiency will be better for the car behind uh, the other person um, so I think we're oh no he oh man this guy passed me up look, look at Cobra going man I thought he was driving like a granny I might have to speed up a little bit here <laughs> uh, but yeah so the uh, settings that I have it on is all-purpose but I did lower this the right height to low 
um, just to get a little bit more um, efficiency. I think he has a custom setting on his. But by the way, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, go subscribe and check out uh, his uh, version of the video. So we are starting our trip. We have set our charging destination to Baker, but we are planning to stop at uh, Yermo at Eddie World. Um, I talked him into it and he's gonna fly his drone so I can go get my jerky. Uh, I've been feeding for that jerky, so. It's been uh, a couple of months since I last went. Uh, I'm not sure if I've posted that video yet. At this time, I haven't, so I don't know which video I'm gonna be posting first, but we went there on Mother's Day with the Model X Plaid. Uh, but right now we are taking the R1T with the Cybertruck to Las Vegas. All right, just wanted to check in. Uh, we have driven a little over 30 miles, 31.7 miles. The battery temperature, this is the thing I love about my Rivian is I could check the temperatures of the battery and the motor in the front and the rear. Um, if you are unaware, the dual motor uh, Rivian R1T uh, and in all purpose mode, it actually utilizes the front motor more, like it switches to front wheel drive uh, once you're at a steady pace. It doesn't um, use the rear motor like the quad does. So the quad motor in all purpose mode will use all four motors, whereas in the dual motor on all purpose, it uses only the front motor. It turns off or disengages the rear motor. Um, so with that, you kind of run in conserve mode even further. So it's probably a little better efficiency. Um, but you can tell here also, aside from the colors of the tires, the temperature of the motor on the front is 130, 132 degrees Fahrenheit and the rear is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. But so far, we are doing 2.06 miles per kilowatt hour and I've used 16 kilowatt hours of energy. This part um, has a pretty good incline. Uh, we were at 3,300 feet above sea level. Uh, so it's up and down. So now we are uh, descending and this could just be a flat area until like Barstow and Baker. That's when it starts going up. Uh, we are checking the stats. It looks like I'm at 211 miles at like 60 something percent and he's at like 217 so it's it's fairly close um so something to add the the miles difference or the range discrepancy might be a little bit uh off simply because i'm on all purpose mode if i were to switch to sport mode um our starting range would have been very close uh based on the percentage and the range i don't know if i'm making sense because all purpose mode is more uh, efficient so that's why it's reporting a high uh, miles on the percentage so at 82 percent and at 296 miles if I were to throw that in sport mode 82 percent would probably give me probably like 260 something to 250 250 miles uh, closer to his cyber truck um, whereas his cyber truck or Tesla's when you put it on chill mode or versus standard, the range and, and all that does not does not change, but efficiency can be uh, affected. So we are here at Eddie World. He is flying his drone somewhere. There's his drone right there, getting some shots. Uh, we're gonna hang out here for a little bit. I'm gonna go get my jerky. But here's some eye candy for y'all. All right, unfortunately, the jerky place is still closed. It's, what is it, like 7 o'clock? Almost. Yeah, so not going to get my jerky, but we stopped here. He flew his drone and stuff. Um, the range in percent is fairly similar. Uh, we're at like 60 some percent and like 211, 215 miles, something I'm like at, that. What, 217 or something? Something so like that. So it's very it's fairly the same. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to head on uh, to the next stop, uh, which is Baker Supercharger. And I'm going to uh, get my first chance. You're going to help me because you've oh, charged yeah. on there before. So oh, let's yeah. get going. All right, we have a slight change of plans. Man, I don't know if you could hear that wind. It is windy here, bro. It's windy here. Uh, we are at the Yermo supercharging station, not the one in Eddie World, but this is the compatible one that says on the map, 
Uh, we had planned to go to Baker, but it says it's incompatible, surprisingly. So we have the Cybertruck behind me and my Rivian right here. This is the first time I'm gonna be charging using the adapter. I got my subscription turned on and uh, Cobra is gonna be assisting me in figuring out how this thing works. I know you gotta lock it or else it won't work. Then you have to initiate it on the app, right? At the Charging. bottom, charge other EV. At the bottom. Oh, it already charged me, dude. Twenty-five bucks. For what? For the charger? Oh, dude, no! It's not supposed to go. I'm supposed to hit the charge button on the thing. It just charged. It just turned on. <laughs> you don't want it to charge? I thought I thought you get the special rate if you use the app to initiate it. Go scroll back charge your other ev hold on let me stop uh, this real quick sunrise uh charge here and then i don't know what this is 4b uh 5b 5d 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 and then start charging 41 cents adapter unknown error what it worked with the rivian i think rivian has an auto charge setting uh, I... try number three uh where is it again oh charge other iv 5d but but it charged uh in the rivian but you think if you pull it out and plug it back in they're gonna charge that 25 again probably uh, i probably won't it like preloads it okay so it may not charge here hmm. But it's charging. It's charging if the Rivian initiates it. Dang. So it's going to charge me a grip, man. I don't know how much it costs. So I'm wondering. <laughs> it charged me $25 again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, but it might be a, a pre authorization. Ah. Uh. In the history, there's only one charge at $25. Okay. No, that's five minutes ago. This one's now. Oh, sh**. Yeah. 50 bucks at the bottom. Go back. Total this month. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> All right. So the first attempt is a major failure. Every time we uh, connect it, the Rivian starts to uh, charge automatically. And when it does, my car got charged $25. So we tried it twice and my credit card notification uh, popped up with two $25 charges. So I don't know if it's like a, like a bank that it puts it in there and it pulls money out, but it looks like I'm down 50 bucks yeah. already. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, when I had it, I didn't have the $12 a month subscription. Yeah. When I tried it, I had this issue. I had to do activate everything through the app. As soon as he plugs in, it, it automatically it, it, kicks on. So and and the charge is with Rivian, not with Tesla. Right. So I'm I'm probably paying the higher the higher uh, rate. So maybe I'll just uh, I'll try to fight that charge at twelve ninety nine or whatever. But hopefully after the end of this charge that it'll not charge me the full twenty five dollars, but instead whatever the amount um, is charging me. But looking at the uh, the app i'm charging at 145 kilowatts it was at 170 something and i'm currently sitting on uh 62 percent state of charge or 224 miles but we plan to charge back up to what we were when in the beginning right uh and then we'll just go from there but i think right now for tesla owners this is a 41 cent per kilowatt rate uh for non-tesla it's usually 10 cents more probably at 51 maybe 56 maybe 61 cents oh, yeah. I, I don't even know it doesn't it doesn't show on the app because i'm subscribed right. but then it didn't work through the app oh this is a bummer dude i haven't even played it slot machine yet i'm down 50 <laughs> bucks i'm down 50 bucks man Damn. <laughs> all right let's see where we're at after this so the other thing at this location we have um both sides the chargers can use uh other side and what I did is I used please use other side. And so that's why I parked on the other side. 
All right, so we stopped here for a minute at Baker uh, gas station because they had coffee bean. Um, but it's still closed. We're like early. It's like not even 830. It's 95 degrees out here. Um, and But we skipped the Baker Supercharger because it says incompatible with the Rivian. That was kind of surprising. Um, but that's why we charged at Yermo. Um, but we should be good to go. Uh, we're probably just going to continue on all the way to Vegas, like right before Vegas. Uh, we have planned to charge for a little bit just so that we top off um, while we park overnight because uh, these cars do lose state of charge as they ju they're just park because of sentry mode and gear guard. Um, but that will be an interesting thing to see how much the Cybertruck loses overnight versus the Rivian, how much it loses overnight. Um, one thing though, I think the Cybertruck has uh, cabin overheat protection whereas the Rivian kind of doesn't have it it's more of an instrument protection thing uh, whereas uh, Tesla I believe has a hundred degree uh, Fahrenheit maximum limit but you could set it as low as I believe 90 degrees Fahrenheit um, but I was telling Cobra I'm like man I'm jealous because whenever you park you got that rear wheel steering and I can't even park next to him as you can see like the angles are a bit like off i'm like on the line and he's like in between the lines so <laughs> that rear wheel steering thing does help out a lot you know the more i look at this thing the more it's growing onto me oh that's not good and i got my design email ready to go <laughs> oh man stop looking stop looking at it oh man all right, so this is one of those parts right after Baker where it's uh, an incline, an uphill. You're not going to really notice or feel it, but you can see here on the screen, it's uh, slowly going up. Uh, Baker is like 900 feet above sea level, and now we've already doubled our elevation. We're at 1,800 and counting. Um, but, like the road doesn't seem like it's an incline you don't really feel it but this is one of those big inclines that's going up we're probably gonna go up to about 3,000 to 3,500 feet uh, and you won't even notice it but your energy is going to be uh, used a lot more simply because this is this gravity and physics I mean you, you need more energy to go up the highest peak I noted I think was like 4,100 feet above sea level and if you're wondering how much impact does that have on efficiency, uh, my last 15 minute average is 1.24 miles per kilowatt. <laughs> That's pretty low. Uh, usually I'm floating closer to two miles per kilowatt and, and above two miles uh, per kilowatt. So it, the elevation impacts it greatly, the incline and everything. Uh, but I just wanted to share that. Not only the incline in this area, but there are some winds here, crosswinds and sometimes headwind. Um, so bear that in mind, like, oh yeah, this truck will do like 300 miles and the distance to Vegas is under 300 miles. I don't need to charge, but you got to realize that uh, part of this route is uphills and a lot of wind. Also, as soon as we left Baker, the car started preconditioning and from Baker to the next charging stop that we had planned, it was like 72 miles or 73 miles, but it's preconditioning and it's still preconditioning. We're 49 miles away. I checked the battery temperature and it was floating around uh, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. So I don't know if it's cooling down the battery or heating it up, but uh, it's, it started preconditioning at a pretty far distance, so I don't know what it's doing. Uh, right now, it looks like we are 93 degrees Fahrenheit as far as the temperature outside. Uh, more than likely, it's going to climb even higher than that. So looking at the battery temperature, it's at 92. I think it was at 97 earlier. So more than likely, it was trying to cool down. Uh, preconditioning so it's probably going to try to maintain this 92 de 92 degree fahrenheit battery temperature until we go uh supercharge we are headed to a 24 like station supercharger i asked in one of the rivian chats that i uh i'm a part of i asked like if some people had that 25 dollar charge it looks like it's uh, a hold on your uh, credit card because I also got an email saying oh it costs this much 
uh, the actual cost. So just a, a hold. I thought I was already down 50 bucks because I unplugged and replugged in, and every time I did it, it was $25, but it's just a hold. Um, so I don't know what's gonna happen at this next supercharger. I don't know why the, the truck auto charges. I don't know if it's because I have auto charge set up on my EVgo account, but it shouldn't affect the Tesla charging account. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, worst case, I'm paying around 10 cents more per kilowatt hour than Tesla owners, and I have to figure out a way to get a refund on that $12.99 subscription uh, if I don't end up using it. Uh, it's still not too bad, not too bad of a rate. Um, but Rivian, I believe, last time I went was like 36 cents per kilowatt. And the last supercharging rate we were at, Yermo, I believe was like 50 cents. But do not worry because usually on these road trips, I have the trip data at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. We are close to state line, the state line between California and Nevada, Prim. There is a Tesla supercharger there, and I usually stop there uh, whenever I drive the Model X. And I took a peek and was wondering why it's not showing up. Apparently, it's incompatible. I, I could have sworn that was compatible, uh, but it's not showing up here unless I uh, filtered incompatible superchargers. So it's not compatible. Now, it is a 250 kilowatt uh, charging speed, it's probably V3, but I think it's just maybe sometimes they turn it off and turn it on. I don't know what it is, but right now on the map, on the Rivian map, it says it's not compatible. So on the way back, we gotta make sure that uh, the state of charge I'll be leaving Vegas is enough to get to um, Yermo. So we charged up to about 84% at Yermo. Let's see how much uh, percent will arrive at the supercharger at South Las Vegas area. Uh, and then that should give us a, an indication of what we should be leaving with uh, when we go back home. All right, we are in Nevada. Uh, we passed a state line. Um, I just wanted to show you the difference when the roads are not going up or going down but somewhat steady uh, you can see my efficiency is floating around 2.79 miles per kilowatt hour so it's a lot better than what it was before at under two miles per kilowatt hour so the higher the number the higher mile per kilowatt hour the better all right we are here at the m hotel in las vegas there is a supercharger here uh, we are charging at the moment. I arrived like around 40 some percent state of charge. It's charging right now at a uh, hundred and like 60 some kilowatt in speed. It preconditioned for a very long time, but it dropped the battery temps to about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I did have to take uh, uh, two spots, which I kind of don't like, but that's just the way it goes. But the cool thing is this area has 24 charging stations and they aren't really that full. I tried these two stations right here at the end, but the adapter would not latch. And if it doesn't latch, it will not work. I also figured out how to uh, finally get the uh, charger to work. I have to initiate the charger through the Tesla app before you plug in, before you plug in. So that's what you have to do. It is like 99 degrees last night. <laughs> <laughs> My phone overheated after recording a little oh, bit. It's hot. It's man, crazy. it is. It's hot, man. Use a backup camera. You know. Oh, there saying? you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. So it's telling me that it's limited by charging station, and we are charging at a rate of 144 kilowatt. Uh, that's fairly slow because this truck can do up to 220 kilowatts, and it's been preconditioning. But here's the deal. So Cobra and his Cybertruck is only getting a hundred and oh, 112 now well 112 oh man man 204 65%. miles 65 percent so we're just trying to get it up to what we were at baker right yeah but um, we don't have to do all that we could probably get it i mean just for overnight you know what i mean it, and then just come back and charge tomorrow yeah well if that's the case i don't really think we need to to do too much well you good if you good i'm good uh, as long as we know yes stuff works that was the real yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the, the issue is uh overnight 
at least with the Model X, I lose 7%. Mm. Uh, with sentry mode and cabin overheat protection, mm -hmm. now that those percentages don't really line up because you have a larger battery where the Model X has a 100 kilowatt. Uh, 100 kilowatt hour battery this one is where is it like 123 127 kilowatt hour but for what not 123 but for yeah. overnight we'll overnight yeah as long as you could cover yeah. that seven percent um yeah. you're you're good but here the rivian it's like one one maybe two percent overnight the thing is it doesn't have overheat cabin cabin overheat protection uh, do we have uh are we gonna have covered parking oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah but i'll help a little bit yeah <laughs> so so currently you're at 67 percent uh how many miles is that like 200 uh, 210 see i mean if we're gonna charge before we head out tomorrow that's that's more than enough oh, yeah i'm good yeah i just want okay. to make sure your thing works all right so we're gonna unplug then and uh and hopefully Tomorrow afternoon, this shouldn't be too busy, hopefully. I don't know. Uh, we can find somewhere, though. Yeah. If not, again, there's a Rivian charger. But now, now I know. Now I know. <laughs> I'm still a rookie, but now I know how to do it in the uh, Tesla charging station. So we're going to be unplugging uh, pretty much soon, and then we're going to head on out. Yeah. All right. So we are in the Sky Suites at Aria. I haven't been here in a minute. Um, but here's the bathroom and we got two beds and we got a uh, strip view in front of the Polo Towers, MGM, we can see MGM. Oh, I don't know what this is. Is that the uh, Crystal Building or something? Planet Hollywood. Um, but yeah, we're back at Aria Sky Suites and we're just going to be chilling for the next couple days. All right, we are here. It's the next morning. This is the Aria Sky Suites. Cobra and I are having just a little small, what, like coffee and pastry? Oh, you ain't even getting pastries. Okay. I already finished my pastry. Oh, you did? <laughs> While you was waiting for coffee. I'm at 52 now. So. 52? So we arrived here at the hotel at um, like 10.30 a.m. yesterday. It's now close to 9 a.m., so about a little over 20 hours he checked and took a peek at his state of charge he arrived at 64 percent state of charge and it's now 52 percent state of charge uh so he's guessing that it might be a lot of um sentry mode activity um overheat cabin overheat probably cabin cabin overheat because we are in the desert uh when i took a peek this morning uh i stayed at 51 percent it didn't move um now my cabin temperature was sitting at 101 degrees fahrenheit and we are parked in a structured parking um so uh rivian does not have cabin heat uh, protect cabin overheat protection um but many people are requesting it and hopefully rivian um will implement it at some point but i love that feature especially when it's just want to keep the cabin cool uh, so today we are just gonna hang out and um, maybe get some breakfast outside of here and um, Yeah, we're gonna go check we're gonna check to see if his uh, cyber truck was Recording a lot of uh, activity man. Hopefully hopefully it ain't that kind of activity But we'll, we'll we're gonna go and check We are in the parking lot and I just wanted to share with you this f-150 lightning with a cab looks pretty slick pretty dope someone's not charging and it's this BMW of course why are you not charging and you're parked here platinum. this is nice yeah platinum trim this is the highest end very nice I like it I like it all right so like or something, huh? yeah so we are headed to the parking spot we, we parked uh, far away, like away from people, and we were taking uh, guesses on how many sentry mode uh, notifications did the Cybertruck get. I'm gonna guess nine, just because we're like away from everyone. Uh, but so about 23 hours. I'm 23 say, hours. And we parked against the wall. I'm going to say, oh, you said nine. It's, I said it's nine. just closest. We're not trying to. No, it doesn't have to be exact. Over. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, I'm going to go with, dang, 23 hours. 
Ooh, I'm I, going 14. I think I went low. Yeah, now I'm, I'm going to stay with nine, though. Okay, yeah. 14. But, dude, 14% state of charge loss, dude. I don't know. Hopefully, they. you said that they are working on a uh, software update that will improve that, right, for the Cybertruck? No, well, they said they were going to set out a software update that will let me know on my app when oh okay when, when it gets triggers triggered the sentry mode so i can check it from my phone and see how many okay so we're gonna go and check it out um but yeah you know the model y i think that was next to you is gone now oh it's a different one it's a jeep all right he is checking to see how many sentry mode recordings did it <laughs> record no way one only one can't be right. Only one? Only one. Oh, I won because I'm the closest. Two, two of them. Oh, two. Yeah. Two recordings. It's probably the uh, the car that left next to you and then this one parked next to you. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have the red dot. Anything, no. No red dot, but it didn't even register. No then dot. maybe there's no passenger. I can maybe record the car that was here. Leaving. That left. There it is. She's checking it out. She's like, it's this big. <laughs> She's looking at my truck too. So I'm still sitting at 51%. 23 hours later. And in my gear guard interface, as you can see, no incident has been recorded uh, while we are parked here overnight. Uh, and you could see in the footage I recorded in Cobra's Cybertruck there, he had at least one uh, recorded incident and they both were pretty much, uh, well, the, the people, the two people that walked in front of his truck uh, was close enough to both our trucks that my gear guard didn't trigger. So I'm not really sure what happened there. Usually gear guard uh, camera sensors are, are pretty good and uh, sensitive, but it didn't record anything but I didn't lose any state of charge. All right, we are back here at Aria. We went out to get some breakfast. And um, yeah, Cobra's like, no one looks at my, nobody looks at my Cybertruck anymore. But while driving on the strip, they got like, a good number of people pulling out cameras. Look, look at this, look at Superstar right here. Look at Superstar right here, man. Yeah. He got the glasses too. <laughs> yeah, I turned off the cabin over heat protection to see now. So well, where are you at with your uh, uh, sleep charger? I took a picture of it. Okay. Remember, but All right. Let's see where it's at. Yeah, Superstar right here, man, driving down the strip. Nobody cares about the Cybertruck, man. Come on, they, nobody, they nobody have, cares. See, a lot of, but you know what? People come from all over the world to come here too, so they probably okay, like Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually trying to, I'm, I'm liking that, that, um, attention. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, you should have saw when we were eating brunch, man. The people that came on the Oh, you had camp. the century? Oh, uh, all those people standing in front, they're all taking pictures, posing. Look at Superstar there. right here. Look yeah. at Superstar. Wow, I just wanted to live a simple life. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when this Cybertruck came into my life, hey, oh, cool. man. An extension of me. <laughs> So we're back at the hotel at Aria. Uh, we're just gonna hang out for a few more hours um, and then head on out like later tonight. Um, hopefully there's no traffic and uh, it's like a hundred something degrees now and it's not even lunchtime yet. We we'll probably fill up right before we leave. Probably the same spot or you're somewhere else? Uh, that or that, the one with the Walmart, it's further out. Okay. But because that one I think had 40, 40 stalls. Okay. Because you know your cyber truck was taking up two, two <laughs> spots, and my rivet was taking up two. Yeah, those some weird spots, man. Those stations. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm gonna test it and see if I can offer for full 100 percent. Make You're it going 100 percent. See if I can Dang, make it home. Dude, that 90, 90 I'm, plus percent is brutal. I'm already at like 96 when I try to match your range. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was that was pretty quick. What, eight minutes from yeah. like 10 percent, like 85 to 94 or something like that? Yeah, I'm just I know I can make it all the way home, but I yeah. just want to test and improve it, you know? OK, OK. So we'll see what's all up. All right. All right. Hopefully my Rivian doesn't slow down charging at. Oh, but we're matching it by miles, not by percentage. Yeah. OK, OK. So my 100 is about probably your 90, 90. or something. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm on the uh, all all around. What is it? Uh, 
all-purpose range. Mm -hmm. If I were to put that on sport mode, I'm sure our, our uh, numbers are going to be a lot more mm. uh, similar. I wonder if I put mine on chill and it's on standard. That's the thing. Tesla doesn't doesn't, doesn't change matter. it. It doesn't change it. It doesn't matter what drive mode you're in, it's still the same number. It just adjusts as you're driving. Whereas in Rivian, it pre-calculates it. So as a sidebar, since we're pulling up on this F-150 right now, I like Were that. you not interested in the F-150 Lightning? I was when looking at the trucks, but um, yeah, I, I just I went with the Rivian instead. The I like tech, the way huh? I, I like the way it looks and everything, but I think I, I could get more more stuff I'm looking for in the Rivian yeah. than in the uh, Ford. This is nice though, man. It is. Uh, yeah, we're back here again. The, the truck is still here. I'm, I like the way it looks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the wheels look nice. I don't know. I want to see the grill. the regular grill the little diamond pattern oh yeah 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 i like the back the little uh cover all right so me and cobra are pretty much done with this trip uh we are back at our cars look at look at the the front size difference how many i could fit up here and all all that dude all that man Dang, okay. and it wasn't yeah. even uh, it wasn't even fitting it if you stand it up, right? It's, it's an efficient use of space. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? You you need a, a taller suitcase. Is it is it gonna close? Is it gonna close? There we go. It, it closes. Is. So what uh, what was your uh, state of charge? So I only lost uh, two percent. Two percent. Seven hours. Seven hours, which is more reasonable. So it was yeah. the cabin overheat protection. In this weather, look, I'm sweating right now, you know what I mean? 101, so, right? Cap yeah, 101. he kept it on the whole time. And we're inside, too, like uh, structured parking. Yeah, so something to think about when you do that. But yeah. uh, I'm less concerned as I was before, man. I was yeah. like, is that vampire drain? 14%, you know? 14 is huge. A lot. 23 yeah. hours. So we're going to go uh, find a charging spot and start making our way back home. All right, before I forget, check out the bug report. Man, I'm... I'm I've I've taken some casualties, but so Cobra has um, PPF, right? PPF. He PPF'd it, and it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. Look at that. Look at that. All right, we are here at 7400 South Las Vegas Boulevard. I've charged here before in my Mother's Day 2024 Vegas trip with the Model X Plaid. I've charged here before. Now I'm charging the Rivian. Of course, I'm taking up two spots. Oh, but it was charging at 211 kilo, kilowatts. Now it's doing 179, 177 kilowatts in speed. It is going down, 174. Ooh, it was pretty quick. Um, I'm at 48% state of charge, and it, it was quick. But I believe I'm a professional now. Um, so before you plug in and initiate the charging, what you need to do is make sure you hear the click on that adapter otherwise if it does not click then it's not a uh, complete circuit or something it won't charge you got to make sure that the adapter and the charging cable will uh, click and that way you can initiate the charge through the app and then plug in the charging cable so yeah unfortunately i am taking up two spaces but this this has 28 charging stations, 21 available and 19 now available because two of us are charging right here. But it looks like Cobra's Cybertruck is parked properly this time. Uh, it wasn't parked properly before because of the charging station position uh, in the M Hotel yesterday. The charging station was like like in the center right and the, the painted lines oh, yeah. were like weird i'm only at 150 man 150 kilowatt i went down to 174. okay i thought yours would even yeah up. yeah 174 it went down so uh this is like the las vegas premium outlets yeah. in the southern well oh, you think that sales there that's my cousin just said maybe we could take a look they got nike here but then i don't want my uh my my rivian to be vandalized if i leave it how long do you have i don't know i'll check but they got McDonald's here. There's an outlet. Cobra wants to check to see if there's a Nike store here because he heard there was um, 
a uh, what do you call it a sale going on so we're gonna go and check but we'll see okay so uh, checking again we are now dropped to 140 950 kilowatt in speed because it's limited by charging station I wonder if we, we had a wet rag it would improve but they yeah yeah so we we felt the uh, the charger cable and it is pretty warm so I don't know if like the wet towel trick that out of spec uh, studios same would work but we don't have a wet towel trick so we don't have a wet towel Maybe so it could be we are at a hundred and one degree right now I've been looking for man. it oh that's gross man <laughs> all right so uh, yeah 22 minutes yeah we could go take a peek yeah, uh, we're gonna go take a peek at the stores hopefully uh, Tesla owners leave my truck alone oh you good man I know Cobra how about that I know oh, Cobra man. is that gonna work this guy's a oh, superstar yeah, you, no you good you're this good. dude right here is a superstar every time he brings the cyber truck at the uh, Las Vegas Strip man Can't nobody worry about me <laughs> Yeah. All right, so we are going to go uh, and just hang out out here. So, yeah, so when uh, Cobra and I was doing the EV Confessions video, I'm like, we got to find a spot where uh, we're not going to be disturbed because, you know, the, the Cybertruck is a magnet. And he's like, nah, 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 it's been out for a while. It ain't going to attract people. So here in Vegas, he's doing a little tour on his cyber truck as we're charging. So we were going to unplug, but he's doing a little tour thing, but it's all good. Uh, we could get a few more uh, percentage on the charging, so it's all cool. But it's great because you get to show people, you know, the technology, the EV. Okay, so we are plugged in, charging here at Barstow. 164 kilowatt, 165, it's ramping up. Cobra says his went down, he was from 250 to 180 kilowatts at, I think, 23% uh, state of charge he got here. Um, but it looks like it's ramping up to 174, 180. Oh, there we go. There we go. 200, 200. Oh, nice. I, I preconditioned and it started preconditioning like 50 miles away. The battery was pretty warm. So it looks like it's settling down to about 208 um but i think i had the uh limit to 90 percent. that's why it's 43 minutes from the other supercharger this is the first supercharger where we have the pull-in finally tess is putting in the pull-in chargers um there there are i think a total of four pull-in charger stalls and we took two of them there was a model y there earlier but they finished charging maybe they didn't realize this is for trailers but uh <laughs> we don't have any we don't have any trailers either, uh, but these pull-in chargers are nice. I, look, did we did we go? Because there's like six six cabinets at the pull-in charger. So are we supposed to, or they just they just throw them all there so that regardless of what car or wherever the uh, chargers are at, what angle you? Oh yeah, because you're pulling in and it's probably hard. Because there's like six cabinets. I'm actually not even using the ones that are lined up here, but Barstow, good job. The, these are great position chargers. And there's they the destination chargers. They, they got destination. Like yeah, right, right, right. They got destina change, destination chargers all the way over there. But on the map, this thing said 70 total chargers with 37 available. But then I think they shut off half Maybe, of them, right? Yeah, they're all closed. Oh, yeah, right there. So you could see here. They got these um, charging stations with um, like caution tape. So these are probably turned off and it doesn't have the Tesla logo lit up while these ones have the Tesla logo lit up. So these are probably on. Not bad. This is this is a really nice uh, charging station. When we went to Arizona with the Model X Plaid, this is one of the charging stops we did. All right, so we're about to unplug. Uh, we put in about 30 or 40 kilowatt. We're tired. Cobra made me drive two hours straight, man. Makes me feel like I was driving to work, man. That, uh, that didn't feel like two hours, man. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, so we're about to unplug, but they, they got some nice charges over here, even for Rivians. Um, but we're going to head on out. One more charging stop, and then we're going to um, close out the video and do some totals or something. Yeah. But yeah, we almost home, so we're going to get going. Ooh. All right, we are back at the supercharging station that we started off with yesterday. Um, 
I'm just gonna put the numbers up and maybe add some things later on. I, we're, we're tired. We're tired. Super tired. So, um, but as far as what we looked at, it's really super close. Yeah. Really super close. Um, and I don't even have a tunnel cover, so, but it was a fun trip. Um, it was cool seeing a cyber truck like pretty much all the way there coming back either in front of me or behind me man it, like just looking at the rear view mirror seeing the uh that light that goes across man <laughs> being able to charge the same spots yes know. so once we figured it out because you know we don't who needs instruction manuals or anything like that we, we ended up figuring <laughs> it out <laughs> but once once we did figure it out it, it's pretty cool um the barstow supercharging locations cool they have the pull in the pull in stations um but yeah it's it's pretty much midnight now, <laughs> but we're gonna get going, um, and then I'll just add some information right afterwards, um, and that's it. But thank you, Cobra, for uh, joining me on this trip. I appreciate you, man. It was good times, man. The things we do for the people. The people. <laughs> so yeah, uh, just hang on a sec. Uh, we're gonna just get situated, and then I'll add some more stuff at the end of the video. All right, man. According to receipts, the first two charging stops were charged by Rivian, including the one at the M Hotel. I could have sworn I did that correctly. The last two were finally charged by Tesla, indicating that I finally did it correctly. It was a bit confusing until we figured it out. I should have watched more videos before going on this trip. So the total cost for this trip just for the Rivian R1T is $63 with four charging stops. Total miles driven is 446.7 miles, 190 kilowatt hours of energy was used, watt hour per mile is 421.94 or 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Average cost per kilowatt hour is 41 cents, total time at charging is 1 hour and 15 minutes or an average time of 18 minutes and 45 seconds. The surprise to me was the charging locations that I really thought would be compatible. I drive to Vegas often and I thought Baker and Prim would be compatible. It's still an easy trip whether I use Tesla or Rivian Adventure Network. This was an interesting trip. Make sure you check out Cobra Tolja's channel to see his video. He will be comparing both Cybertruck and R1T trip data. What are your thoughts on this video? Are you team Cybertruck or team Rivian R1T? If you had to choose between the two, which truck would you take on a Vegas trip? Keep in mind, uh, with the Rivian, you don't have to charge the Tesla supercharger. The Rivian Adventure Network is available on this route, at least the route that we took. Uh, but yeah, so let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. If you liked the video, please like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.